Hi everyone, and welcome to our parent support webinar on writing development. I'm Jamie Koo, the Parent Engagement Specialist here at the Santa Clara County Office of Education. And with me today is Jenna Picotta, our Academic Technology Specialist. This is a re-recording of our Parent Support Writing Development webinar. So let's go ahead and move through some of the housekeeping uh, and also some of the announcements that this is our third webinar. And our fourth one is on academic content support scheduled for May 28th, Thursday at one, uh, one o'clock. So um, let me just introduce myself to you again. My name is Jamie Koo and um, I'm, I used to teach uh, English language arts for 10 years in Milpitas and currently I am kid, the mom to two kids ages 13 and 10. And so today what I'm going to be doing is to present a little bit of content from our parenting workshop series. There are two goals for the parenting workshop series. The first is that we promote a healthy balance in family life and the second is to give tools for um, parents to support academic success. So today, um, again, is a third in a four-part series, and I'll be presenting a few snippets. So here's today's goals. The first one is adapting teacher strategies. How do teachers approach academic content, and how might that work for you at home? The second is adopting teacher mindset. When thinking about learning outcomes, what is the one thing that you want your kids to know at the end of the day? And the third is amplifying parent advocacy, which means what barriers, barriers do I need to overcome so I can get what is best for my child? Where can I get support and resources? I'll be sharing some of those support and resources with you today. So before we continue, I need to make a very important distinction. Some of you may be interested in the more mechanical aspects of writing, like spelling, grammar, and sentence structure. Uh, however, today's webinar is going to focus on supporting writing development, which is to say that we will focus on building and expanding, you know, the creative aspects of writing, simply because we want our kids to enjoy writing and to do more of it. Okay, so let me walk through today's specific content for you. We're looking at writing development support, and specifically, we're going to continue the theme of connecting through conversation. We'll be talking about what the writing process looks like. I will share some strategies to support elementary school students. And I'll wrap up by sharing some strategies and conversation starters for supporting secondary students. Okay, so let's get started. Tip number one, understanding the writing process. The writing process is generally described in these five steps of the writing process. The first step is pre-writing. This is where students generate ideas, where a writer uh, explores possible topics, they collect details, and then they plan how, they, how they're gonna use these details in their writing. The second step is to actually do the writing. They're gonna get the ideas down. Uh, during this step, a writer thinks about the first draft and just finishes it up. The third step is revising. This is where writers make changes to improve writing. They can change ideas that are not clear or complete, and they may ask at least one other person to review the draft. In a classroom setting, it might be asking another uh, student in the class to do a peer review, or they might ask a teacher, and occasionally they may also ask you, the parent, to look over their writing. The fourth step is editing. This is where they now go through with a fine tooth comb and pr proofread and correct errors. A writer then checks his writing for correctness before preparing the neat and final copy. The last step is publishing. This is where students create their final copy. It could be as simple as turning it in to a teacher. It could be printing it out on some paper, uh, stapling it together in pages of a book. So whenever they're finished, we'll call that the publishing step. However, an authentic writing experience will not go straight down the five steps in chronological logical order. In fact, most teachers understand that the writing process looks a little bit more like this. The writing process goes back and forth, 
between steps, sometimes going back and forth between steps two to four, writing, revising, and editing stages many, many times before the writing is complete. So let's take a look at what America's favorite beagle, Snoopy, wants to say about the writing process. All right, so he has uh, an, a little comic strip, World's Famous Novels, Collector's Edition, Volume 1, Number 2. And it looks like Snoopy is thinking, and he types the word it, and more pacing, more thinking, it was. All right, followed by more quiet times. Pacing, thinking, pacing, thinking. It was a dark, it was a dark and stormy night. And he finally thinks to himself, writing is hard work. Yes, Snoopy is exactly right. The writing is a lot of brain work. There's a lot of energy spent on thinking and planning what to write. Parents, sometimes when you see your kids staring off into space, they are thinking about what to write. Please don't mistake that for wasting time. Birkin and Yaris are independent education consultants and their website has what I think is the most accurate description of what the writing process really looks like. Looking at this graphic, you can see that the writing process is messy, disorganized, and maybe a bit chaotic. You might also notice that most of the time spent in the formation of ideas during, is during the pre-write and draft stages. The second large chunk of time is spent in the edit and revise stages where the writer is looking to refine the writing. Friends, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that students spend ample time pre-writing so they can develop their ideas. As a parent, the best way to support writing development at home is to have conversations with your kids. The more they talk with you, the more kids get to explore their ideas. Especially during the early stages of writing, consider these benefits of having conversations with your kids. They'll generate creative ideas. Your child will receive validation from you about their thoughts. You know, the more you say yes and affirm them, the more their writing confidence increases. You'll also empower your children to create new content. They'll learn to express details and clarify their points. An important idea here too is they'll develop a sense of voice. It's their own very personal style of communicating. When they speak with you, they're kind of rehearsing how they're going to be speaking on their paper. Also, children will start enjoying the discussion of a wide range of topics. So tip number two, support for elementary students. So how can you offer support for your kids who are in elementary school? Here's a funny insight from Linus. He reads Snoopy's story, It Was a Dark and Stormy Night, and offers this advice. If you're having trouble selling your work, I suggest a different approach. So Snoopy thinks about it and just changes the word order. It was a stormy and dark night. That's not far from the truth, friends. Elementary school students need support in creating and generating new ideas. So here's what you can do to help your kids come up with more ideas and fully express them. Again, the idea here is to make connections through conversation. Have open-ended conversations that are beyond just yes or no answers and actively listen to them. Have these conversations during your morning walk or during meals or when you're tucking them into bed at night. Here are some questions to get you started. Teach me something I don't know. How did you show kindness today? What made you laugh? There are 50 more conversation starters just like this on the blog, Her View From Home. Go check it out. Another thing you can do to support and encourage your young writer is to involve them in all sorts of everyday writing. Have your kids help with making a grocery list, writing and sending a thank you letter or a birthday card in the mail. You can even record their feelings and experiences by creating a COVID-19 time capsule. 
check out the link for the time capsule. If you need additional authentic writing activities, there's a link for a handout there at the bottom of the slide as well. Friends, I've given you a lot of ideas. So let's pause for a minute and think, what is one new idea that you learned? What is one thing you can try? And what questions do you still have? So as I'm thinking back to the live webinar, some of the things that kind of stand out to me was I, somebody commented about, you know, how something so mundane like a grocery shopping list would actually turn into a really good writing activity for students. So mm -hmm. I like that one, and I also have been making a lot of birthday cards lately. I don't have kids myself, but actually I do have a niece that I was able to visit over the weekend, and I think that would have been a great activity for me to do with her. Yes, and writing cards or letters give kids a lot of anticipation because now they might expect a letter in return, and what a happy time it is for them to actually get mail in the mail. Yeah, the more that the kids see that, you know, writing is something we do every day, even composing emails is something we do every day. Uh, they'll see that writing is in every aspect. Okay, so tip number three, support for secondary students. Okay, guys, Snoopy's back. Let's see what advice Lucy has for our favorite beagle. Lucy says, you should try writing an adventure story. Try writing about a real hero type. After some thoughts, Snoopy types, he was a dark and stormy night. I love it. Night, the time of day, and night, the medieval soldier in armor. Snoopy's plays on word is so funny. I love the tie-in with our hero's journey from the second parent webinar episode on supporting reading comprehension. Are you curious about the hero's journey? Check out the link for the recorded second episode. No doubt, secondary students who are in middle or high school are writing at a higher level of sophistication. However, they still need the same support from their parents. Consider how you could open up your child's imagination with these one, these open-ended conversation starters. If you could wake up tomorrow with a superpower, what would it be? If you could have any animal in the world as a pet, and I'm sure some of you might already have pets, but you can change it up a bit. If you could have any exotic animal in the world as a pet. There are 40 more questions um, in the parenting, positive parenting solutions with conversation starters just like this. Get them talking, see if they'll open up beyond just their grunts. <laughs> Encourage your preteen and teenager to explore writing activities outside of their classwork. Here, you'll want to find something that is age appropriate and relevant. For an adolescent, it may still involve some sort of social media because it is such an attractive medium. And they can use their platform to share encouraging, inspiring, thought provoking, and meaningful content. For example, they can create a blog. Maybe they can try their hand at creating a comic strip. There are lots of programs they can use to create cool graphics like Canva or Adobe Spark. They can create a documentary about living during the pandemic. You can check out more writing activities from Edutopia. Sometimes it helps teenagers to come up with content to write about when they have experienced it firsthand. If you would like your child to broaden their horizon and experience a virtual event that emphasizes youth voices, check out this upcoming event featuring guests, guest speakers, youth art, and other youth groups. This three-day virtual event will inspire your child to speak up, to know that their voice counts, and to see that their lives are connected to a larger community. This three-day event started on May 22nd, but the next ones are May 30th and June 6th. Have them check it out. When it comes time to actually reading and reviewing your child's work in progress, try connecting through conversations with these prompts. I really like how you. Which part of this writing are you the most proud of? 
And what are some challenges you overcame while writing? This is how you affirm with a message that says, yes, I like everything you're doing and I would love to see more. If you'd like to see a full list of conversation starters, there's a link under the picture. You can also offer constructive feedback to point them in the right direction if you think something is a little off. For example, which areas of your writing would you like some feedback? Let me read this section out loud to you. Have I interpreted your tone and voice correctly? Or how can I continue supporting you? So let's talk about uh, some concrete, I've talked about some concrete suggestions on how to support writing development, specifically by using connections through conversation. I'd love to know what you're thinking. If this were the webinar, I would ask you to write in the chat, um, but please continue thinking. What might work for your family and what is a suggestion that you can try? I'd also be curious to know what barriers do you see and how might we address these barriers. I'm going to include my email address at the end of the slides. And if you have any questions that you would like to follow up, please send me an email. Well, it looks like Snoopy wants the last word. It was a dark and stormy night. Suddenly, a shot rang out. <laughs> my plot is thickening. That's awesome, Snoopy. I'm glad you're making progress. I can't wait to read what comes next. Friends, Snoopy actually has a whole Dark and Stormy Night series. If you would like to read the others in this series, just Google Snoopy Dark and Stormy Night in the, in, in the Google images and you'll see all of his series pop up. Fun stuff, I love Snoopy. So if you would like a copy of the slide deck or notes with resource links, please check out these pages. It's a bit.ly, so bit.ly, backslash SCCOE parent three. This is the third in the series. Alternatively, I would be more than happy to send you the links to the slide deck or notes page. Please send an email to jkoo at sccoe.org. Feel free to share our webinar with your friends and join us next time for the last episode, parent support webinar on academic support on May 28th at 1 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us and until next week, be safe and be well.